Some of the key functions of potassium plays a lot of roles, but these are some of the most important. So fluid balance. So it helps as an electrolyte, it helps maintain hydration and, and your fluids. Um, as an electrolyte, it has an effect or it pulls an osmotic effect on water. So it keep, can keep you hydrated. Now on this note, I want to talk a little bit about, about water because many of you are using a reverse osmosis water filter. And that's, that's actually a very good filter, by the way. RO, it's oftentimes referred to as RO filtration, is a great way to filter your water, especially if you live in the city. And the reason why is, is that RO is really one of the only flu, uh, filters that pulls fluoride out of the water. And you want to pull that toxic fluoride out of the water because it's a neurotoxin. And we see here nerve function, potassium plays a role in that too. But fluoride is not good for you. But the problem with RO is it depletes the water of electrolytes. So RO will also filter out potassium. And if your diet's low in potassium and you're not getting much potassium from your water, but you're a super heavy water drinker, maybe you're eat, you know, drinking 64 plus ounces a day, you can actually create a greater degree of dehydration. And part of that is because you do get some potassium from water. Uh, not a lot, but you do get some. And so that it's important if you're using RO filtration that you add in, you want to add an electrolyte back to your drinking water um, if you're using an RO filter. And one of the one if you're looking supplementally to do this, I recommend something called ultra electrolytes, which is a liquid, and you can add about a half a teaspoon in that of that liquid into every, for every 20 ounces of water that you drink and you're adding back in the, the electrolytes, including potassium. So it plays a key role in the fluidic balance. It plays a role in nerve function. Potassium is, again, the term electrolyte oftentimes is, is really focused on fluids and, and fluid and hydration, but the term electrolyte also refers to uh, these, these minerals that help to balance how well your nerves can communicate with each other. Um, your potassium and your sodium play this inner exchange between cell membranes to allow your nerves to properly function. And so if you, if you are struggling with, with potassium deficiency, your nerves won't communicate as well. And where we'll actually see this manifest, we'll see this manifest as uh, brain fog and fatigue. We'll see this manifest as muscle spasms or cramps. Uh, because your, your nerve and your muscles require, uh, require potassium again for that neurological action. We'll also see, um, with nerve function, we'll see things like heart arrhythmias. So if you have heart palpitations, heart skipping a beat, that type of thing, remember that's also an electrical or a neurological function of potassium. Potassium also regulates blood pressure. Now, that's critical to know because, and we'll talk about this in depth in a minute, many people take blood pressure medicines, right? So if you're on a, a, a diuretic, as an example, one of the most common potassium depleting diuretics is called hydrochlorothiazide. So you, you may be on hydrochlorothiazide, oftentimes abbreviated that way, and that's a diuretic that will drop your potassium, right? But potassium lowering potassium causes an increase in blood pressure. Let's change our color here. It causes an increase in blood pressure. So again, if you're taking a diuretic to lower your blood pressure, you could actually be affecting your blood pressure by lowering your potassium. We'll, we'll dive into that in a little bit uh, more in just a minute. And then carbohydrate metabolism. Potassium is critical for proper insulin production. Potassium is critical for blood sugar regulation and for helping your body to properly store or get glucose into your cells. And so low levels of potassium can lead to elevations in, in insulin, right, which can contribute to an increased risk for heart disease, but also elevations of, of potassium can lead to a sugar craving effect. So let's make a little bit of room here. So if we've got, again, if, if we're, if low potassium is increasing insulin and which over time causes an increase in insulin resistance, right? This in and of itself can contribute to diabetes 
and we're talking predominantly here type, type 2 diabetes, um, and elevations in blood sugar. So again, when your insulin is, res when your body's resistant to the insulin that you're producing, we get an elevation in, in blood glucose or blood sugar. And that elevation um, leads to the storage or the formation of fat, right? So then your body will take that extra sugar and it will store it as triglycerides, which is, a, which is basically is what goes into your fat cells makes them bigger. So if you're trying to lose weight, one of the issues, and a lot of people go on, for example, a ketogenic diet um, to, to do their weight loss. And a ketogenic diet, just depending on what your diet consists of, but some of them, especially if you're leaning more toward, let's say, like a carnivore-based diet, can be lower in potassium. And so what can happen to these individuals, if, if they're not making sure that they're getting adequate potassium, it can lead to, uh, in a sense, an elevation in blood sugar and actually hinder their ability so, to lose weight. So if you've ever gone on a ketogenic diet and weren't super successful, you might really consider the, the fact that potassium, your potassium might've been too low when you were, when you were doing that diet and uh, potentially think about how you could get your potassium levels up. Again, we'll talk about that here shortly and in just a minute. Now, potassium also plays a role in bone and kidney health as a mineral, very important for your, your bone health, very important for your kidney function. So potassium has a lot of really critical key roles, but it's oftentimes ignored because, again, it, it's ignored by a lot of functional doctors because there's really no great supplement for potassium. And a lot of doctors, if you can't give it in a supplement, they are not really interested in talking about it or they lose focus or attention on it. And most medical doctors don't get enough or adequate nutritional training to really understand it very well or to understand the, the symptoms associated with it. And so it oftentimes largely goes unignored. Now, one of the other reasons why is that most of the time when you go to the doctor, they'll, they'll do a test uh, called a chem, chem panel or a chemistry panel. And this chemistry panel usually does have, it will measure your, your potassium levels. Um, but your, your, your blood levels or your serum levels of potassium, remember potassium works in the blood, but it also works in the cell. It works in the nerve. It works intracellularly. So the best way to really measure potassium is not in the blood. And the reason why is your body does a really good job of keeping those levels pretty constant. And that, you know, just depending on which lab, you know, the range is, you know, anywhere from three and a half to about, to about, oh, what's happening here? It's about five, uh, 5.2, 5.3, somewhere in that neighborhood. So again, depending on the lab, the, the reference range can vary just a little bit, but your, again, this is your serum or your blood potassium level. The best way to look at potassium, though, is not this. If this is, if this is skewed, you've got problems. If this is really low, you've got problems, and these things are already happening. These problems over here are already occurring. So, so you don't want to wait for a test like this. If you really suspect your potassium is low, you want to ask your doctor to run an RBC potassium level. Um, this is a form of intracellular potassium measurement. So red blood cells, what that stands for, RBC potassium levels, a much more accurate way to try to assess potassium. So again, don't just rely on that serum level because your body does a really good job of keeping that level pretty stable. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.